Smart Podcast Show brings you the Ghost Bomber. On November 23rd, 1943, something happened at Allied Base, Air Base in England. And to this day, is not fully explained. B-17 Bomber, who was part of the 91st Bomber Group, was following the guide path of the runway and ready to land. The gears were down, but because of Weight was flying, ground crews assumed the plane in damage, though none was visible. While some of the crew were wounded as the current six of flight showed were lining up for an emergency landing. The bomber was landed up, lined up perfectly and hit the runway with relative ease, but then it began to bounce. Then the plane got off kilter and one of the wings dug into the ground, and it slammed in the earth and, it, and was destroyed. Less than 100 feet in front of the gun position, the lumbering bomber finally came to stop. The Indian kept running. The cradle crews held their breath. They waited and waited and waited some more, but the crew, no crew emerged from the flying fortress. No emergency call from the plane announced it, from the plane announced its arrival, which armed ground crews from the start. But the apparition began to grow as the three remaining engines continued spinning their propellers. After 20 minutes, a man named John V. Chris decided to investigate. Chris was apprehensive in his search. He expected to find dead or dying men from the air crew. Instead, he found 12 parachute packs ready to be deployed. But his search revealed there was not a single soul aboard the aircraft. The alarm over the incident was shot through the train command and the investigation started immediately. First day in the plane was part of the 91st Bomber Group, which was a group that operated at the base where the B-17 landed. Once the squadron of plane was identified, questions began to swell around the crew. The plane was littered with evidence that they were, they were aboard at some point. Even though the parachute was seemingly on board, someone, some time later, all the men were located, they were all alive and well, at a near base in Belgium. B-17 was, was, was to bomb the Leo oil family, which is a dangerous target given its location in southern Germany. Upon Chris's research of the aircraft, he found a log in the navigator's station that read Bad Flak. German anti-aircraft for fire intended, indeed wounded the plane. A bad bomb bay sustained a direct hit, and by some miracle didn't even set off the bombs. An engine was also reported damaged and another one quit mid-air flight. Yet when the plane was approached, all four engines were still malfunctioning. The plane struggled to keep its attitude once it was hit. The pilot, Howard Arch Bolt, turned the plane around and, helped, and headed back to England. When the second engine became compressed and stopped working, De Bolt knew the plane would never make it across the English Channel. He then set a course to Brussels, Belgium, which is where the headquarters of the 8th Air Force was located. They grouped the crew bailed. The bailed the plane. De Bolt was last to leave. He set the plane on autopilot and jumped. He appreciated that the plane would succumb to its wounds and crash into the ground, but somehow not only did it keep flying for 2,000 miles, but it found its way to the airburst. It took off from. The end of this case stated the plane's trouble, plane trouble, probably cleared up once the crew left. Before they had that, that did that, the boat had ordered them to toss the materials and weigh the plane down, which may have helped keep the plane in flight. Then the failing engines caused the plane to slowly descend to the Earth's surface. The port was riddled with problems that didn't explain anything but anything. The beef. One seven was a tough aircraft designed to fly even when severely damaged, as many reports exist of crews of build held. And you see the airplane continue to fly. Ground crews witnessed the engines working it, so failing engines didn't cause the plane to descend. And many instances of B one sevens flying without a pilot a crew never ended the crew finding its way of the plane finding its way back home. The first simple fact remains that that neither no no expression exists for that happened. The first cases failed to come up with plausible conclusion. The 
security detail was reported by the crew right as it hit in the bomb bay. It was hit in the bomb bay. Barreau said, for the life of me, I didn't know why the bombs didn't blow up. He said there was a tremendous flash of life at the moment. It was common thread in so many counts of unexplained incidents and unexplained identified aircraft in World War Two. Many accounts of night and identified flight craft aircraft in World War Two were spotted by night fighter aircraft. Night fighters, as the name implies, were planes were specified that made them adept at dog fighting in the darkness of night. The planes often had two engines that were a bit heavier than the daytime cat parts. In the contrast, just about every other plane in World War Two, they were equipped with radar, which enabled them to identify boogies using their equipment instead of having to spot an enemy aircraft or rely on ground radio sensations hundreds of miles away. The crew, around the same time as landing a ghost bomber, an American A air crew of a night flight have spotted something that's inexplicable. A Bristol Bow fighter British plane was equipped with advanced radar. According to arrangements, everything appeared normal. Crew three consisted of pilot Edward Schwarzer, reserve officer observer Donald J. Mirrors, and intelligence officer Fred Red Wingworld. They observed and described as flying as eight or ten orange lights off the wing flying through the air at a high speed. Myers rode his radio ground units and they confirmed that his radio read red. There was nothing there. His radio was at my own factory in front of combat division over Germany. So so we decided to have a closer look. The object was seen had been visible for several minutes and should have turned the plane towards them. As all of a sudden, it's as if someone flipped a switch, the lights went away. The crew was baffled. Then the lights reappeared. This further, time further away, and then disappeared again. Mares gave the objects a name, which was often used in 1944, and he called them Foo Fighters. A one of the 4150 Special Operations Squadron. Mira was an avid reader of the Smoky Stoker cartoon. Was a word Stokey, Smoky Stoker often used, used often when he said, "They were the foo, There's a fire." It was fitting because it really had. See, there was there was a foo fighter. It appeared to be on fire. It, this is the first use of the term foo fighter. In terms of describing an undefined flying flying object, explanations around to tree nature. And then I'm quite satisfied the men of the 4150 Special Operations Squadron. My mind's crew were part of. They were responsible for more food fighting sightings than any other unit in World War II. The official war diary of the 5th 145 contains multiple encounters with unexplained reports of undivided flying objects date back to Feb- September 1941. There's an extremely with extreme uptick in nineteen December nineteen seventy nineteen forty four. The war diary for the fourth of one fifth on December fifteenth reads saw a brilliant red light at two thousand feet east, two hundred miles per hour in the vicinity of Elston, due to alternative integrator failure. Would not pick up contact but followed it by sight until it went out. Could not get close enough to identify objects before it went out. On December 18th, the River Logs reports a similar instance, but this time it was more than just one site. Like in the rest of the area, sighted five or six, five or six red green lights in T shape, which have followed aircraft through turns and closed to a thousand feet. Lights followed. For several miles, then he went out. But our pilots have named those mysteriously legible. While well, the encounter over Germany at night, Foo Fighters, when the pilot was later asked, he felt he witnessed the eerie lights from his aircraft. He said, "Scared shitless."
is the one lamp for instance of July December twenty third had a bow pie and his crew in a run for their lives. The pilot was first spotted two orange groves racing towards his aircraft from the ground. He raided in and this time round ground radar picked up the objects. But the levels the glow, the, the glows leveled out, gave his plane chase that, that explained executed t- turns left and right, then attempted to lose them in a straight steep dive with nothing he could do to shake them off. After two minutes, he, the glows peeled off while we were in perfect control, and shortly therefore it was no longer visible. They became what became so alarming about Foo Fighters that they were noticeably faster than the British planes. Also, any time pilot tried to get better, get better contact, Foo Fighters flew away and were always able to outrun them. Perhaps most disturbing was the ability to fall off maneuvers that were decidedly possible for the aircraft of that day. On Christmas Eve, 1974, the 415 War Diary read, observed a glowing red objects shooting straight up, changed suddenly to a plane, view of an air, a view of, of a doing a wing over and doing a dive and disappearing. The crews of the planes started to talk and heavily reacted reports were printed to various revelations. They spoke of objects but didn't quite have a details of their crew's descriptions. One such is reported, another radio radio reporter said, I am frankly picked up a target on the radio screen. It appeared to be conventional, conventional aircraft, but being not, but being tracked, it would accelerate to a fantastic speed, which made it impossible to get a, get, get a rate rate on even more difficult to identify. So we refer to them as ghosts. Explanations: The U.S. military investigated the incidents, and the conclusion not quite is stuck up. B-17 pilot was chased by blue fighter. Over 250 miles later, described his encounter with an intelligent officer. The pilot recounted the explanation he gave. It was a new German fighter. He but did not explain why he did not fire us, or if it was put, putting our heading at an airspeed. Why did he not receive anti-aircraft fire? Another explanation given to air crews is a natural phenomenon known as St. Edward's Fire. St. Edward's Fire was originally discovered on ships when the large masts produced fire when trails, like trail, that was usually associated with lightning storms or when electrical currents were in the air. Phenomenon occurs in an airplane the same type of conditions, also creating a trail of fire in the wing tips. This, but this association is not such a very pilots because it didn't address why their lights were more immovable than anything they had seen. It was, if it was St. Amos fire that came from a plane, the pilots were convinced that Foo Fighters were not traditional aircraft. One of the other problems about some of fire is it appears like a tracer or meteor, not spear-like shape. It was reported by pilots. However, another natural form called ball lightning does appear in spears and more closely resembles the pilots' revolts. Cases of ball lightning in history were incredible. Great flashes that lead to explosions are typical. Some have been, even killed people, but the phenomenon is short lived and never pays like the bright lights that followed in the aircraft. Silver balls, whether, whether p- phenomenon was not the answer the pilots were looking for. And naturally, the crossy turned towards the enemy in the war, the Germans. A news report, news report released in December of 1944 describes German efforts to disrupt alien radar and effective war, wartime systems. Germans would use this release silver in the cloud, metallic nature, floating balls into the skies. This is using small, tiny foil strips released to the air to try and disrupt radar. The Germans were employing use of silver balls around the same time, but no pilot in the 415th ever reached the conclusion that this is what they saw. Very good, very good cosmetics. No secret, the Germans kept a vast number of resources. But the vast amount of resources to have wonder weapons during the course of World War II. After, after the war, German major, army major wrote 
where a couple of the such weapons made of Rudolf Lindstar came the Germans who created first book on Kaiserberg, which were tiny remote controlled jet aircraft. They were equipped with cruiser tubes, which meant to send an electric current from the air to disrupt alien bomber engines. They would explain why the lights followed the planes, but the Kreston tube never actually worked. Since this was the case, it seems the Germans were equipped the small craft of, of a more effective weapon. The fact that these wonder weapons never caused any damage was caused because also quite dismissed them as possible explanations. Other than explanations given them when the pilots of crew suffered with battle fatigue or the strain from flying constant combat missions in high stress environments. Instance of battle fatigue are also known Cause hallucinations, but because of many different aircraft experiences, such similar occurrences, it's unlikely they would be the same hallucination. This combined with the fact that lights occurred in such a localised area, this explained ad hoc to air, air, air crews. Scientists and psychologists are at the practice of qualifying claims. They have little use of anecdotal evidence. Part of Project X148 AV 4 3, as it was called, was conducted by US Navy shortly after the war and focused on their efforts around vertical or pilot disorientation. In his findings, in his findings Dr. Igor Vensley said every individual has not, are not skilled observers or heal for human behavior. They usually have the most vigorous understanding of their own feelings. Like other Navy people, therefore, they have simply adopted from, um, to cover multiple other explainable events. And in McClellan explained what okay, McClellan then explained why entire crews witnessed the same hallucination. Strange global glowing. The most promising illustrations of the ones previously given are the lights of German wonder weapon. There's still problems with that theory is more complicated by the fact that food fighters were not specific to the European theatre of operations. In September of nineteen forty one, two men of the Polish ship ferrying British troops witnessed a strange glow out glowing for greenish light. Half the size of the full moon appeared to us. They alerted an officer. The three men watched the aircraft with its full moon over an hour. It wasn't pilots or an aircraft or pilot vertical. It doesn't explain what they saw. But they were not, they were, were the full fighters, not so fit to American pilots, but German and Japanese pilots reported irregular appearances of flight as well. One of the most famous referred to Foo Fighters was first appeared in the nineteen seventy five photo history of by Jury J D Torres and S. Foco objective solely UFO. Many people debate whether the photograph is real or altered, but experts agree that if it was altered, whoever did it chose a poor photo to make such an effort. A light in the background, whose image was captured by a Japanese photographer, does not have an illustration that fits the profile or other sightings of food fighters. The Robertson panel. There were simply too many reports, previously discussances for the US government to ignore. In 1953, the Robertson panel convened to investigate reports of identified flying objects. This is only part of their aim, as the other reports surfaces after World War II. As well, the Robinson panel positionally co- conveyed to investigate the occurrence of identified flying objects flying over the Washington D.C. area. The investigation was headed by the CIA to determine if it, unexplained occurrences were a threat to the national security. The initial findings were classified as indeed, as it included sensitive information after existing. Our military operations since it's been declassified, publicly has learned 
the panel found very unsettling conclusions. Several top scientists familiar with experimenting aviation technology headed by Caltech physicists Howard P. Robinson gave no official conclusion, but determined that most instances were the result of this taking flying objects. Instances didn't fit with its findings, but concluded to be probably be something of a similar nature to Ms. Indodavandajkin, but other investigation would be needed. After explanations were not given, but given, but none fully certified. Uh, Observers, nor, nor aircraft crews, for that matter, are they identified as really airframes from other world? Is it possible to be really sure all the antidotal quantitative data in the world will not explain with absolute certainty? As far as food fighters, Robert Zidberg, from the historian, who was a historian for the nearby. 4170 Squadron heard many of these stories directly from the pilots of the 4150 themselves. He reached this conclusion. I think the two fighters did show up on the radar because they were the, plain light. Radar has to have a solid object. It, was a, it wasn't a booby out there. The planes, pilots could actually absolutely be able to tell. Tic tac. Pilots offer their best explanation for antidotal data when it comes to UFOs, the common observation. Observer, a zeppelin or a weather balloon might look like one, but pilots have a unique knowledge of the shape and aerodynamics of airframes and they're experts in moving capabilities of aircraft. That's followed by simple physics. Pilots seeing UFOs is not something localised in World War Two, either in the case of 2004, an F-18 out of San Diego captures spectacular images of a tic-tac shape object flying at speed. It accelerated like nothing I've ever seen, the pilot told the New York Times. I have no idea what I saw. If he's foolish to think that it was an American super weapon, effectively meaning the pilot was tricked by his own government. But they were out there in many shapes and forms, and since there's normal pilot been able to successfully make contact with Foo Fighters or UFOs. This is a world to a two since remain a mystery.